And when you come away from those special days where you've had three, four, five in a day. Yeah, you, the, you, 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 you know, you, you do, those are the days that obviously get you up in the morning and the days that get you excited. But the, the thing about this game is it doesn't belong getting taking you back down to earth again, you know what I mean? Yeah, so you got literally to, back down to back, earth. Literally back down to earth again. So you have to, you have to enjoy those, those moments, but at the same time, um, if you're uh, in a competitive life or competitive sport, like you're trying, you know there will be ups and downs, and it's how you cope with the the downs as well as the ups. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it can be quite head wrecking at times, so yeah. it can you know. So, um, so those are the tough, you know, the days when you're not having winners are the tough as are as tough as the good days are when you're having winners. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, it's sure. probably as important as to how you cope with them days as to how you cope with the bad days, you know. I was I heard a good saying years ago that you should never um let praise or criticism get to you, but it was a weakness to get caught up in either and it's true, you know. You, you should you, you gotta stay, you gotta stay level, level and know, and know what you're you gotta own. stay level. Because as as you said, as quick as you're up you're you can be down, you know, so um but it's, it's the same in every sport, you know. You if unfortunately you can't win all the time. That phrase, it, head wrecking, is an interesting one, isn't it? Because actually, um, in, in lots of ways, you're not in a sport like football or rugby and cricket. You know, I was at Cheltenham last mm. year, where it, man not known to me, but very close to you guys, JT. Yeah, you that know, that must really wreck wreck your head. Yeah, that's tough because it, you know, even though we're we're competing against one another, and it's a com you know. It, the, the competition is is great, but at the same time, um, you know, they're your, your colleagues and, and people, that, you know, your friends that you see regularly. Um, and, and when something happens um, to someone like, like John Thomas, um, it's it's quite hard, you know. It's very hard to take, you know. So, um, you know, you just got to try and do the best to support people like that and, and, and um, just get on with it, you know. You don't want to be thinking about it because if you did, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it, you know. That's for sure. There's not many sports that... The only thing behind you is an ambulance, and there's a fair chance you're going to end up in it. So, and and I mean, you have. That's, that's quite that's a lot. The thing. Yeah, quite a lot. And I'm, I'm, however successful I might have been at riding winners, I've been as successful as, uh, as probably most people at getting into the ambulance. So, um, sometimes or a lot of the times not walking into either. So, mm. um, but that that's part and parcel of the game. You know, you you. You know, I'm obviously not that bright because I always think you go you go back to it. Yeah, I obviously think I always think it's not going to happen to me, and when it does happen to me, I think that's the last time it's going to happen to me. And but do do you seriously have you ever seriously thought that nah, that's it? That was too close. I think I'm unbreakable. That's the you know, and I still haven't worked out that I'm not uh, because I've broken every bone in my body from my ankle, my leg, my arm, my wrist, my lower vertebrae, middle vertebrae, shoulder blades, collarbones, all my ribs, puncture my lungs. You know, so I've gone through the lot and I still haven't worked out that I'm not unbreakable, so I'm not the sharpest. So what keeps you going? Um, believe it or not, after telling you all that, I actually really enjoy what I do. Um, I feel very lucky, like uh, I, I've said numerous times, that any sports person, person should feel very lucky to be able to live their life through a sport because your sport is, is a hobby. It's something you start off as a kid because you really enjoy it. And, um, if you're lucky enough to earn a living or live your life through that, then you're you're blessed, you know. And I I feel that I feel that I'm I'm very blessed to live my life through through riding horses uh, because I wouldn't like to tell most people, but I'd do it for nothing really. Um, yeah. So don't, don't tell the boss. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know, so it's it, it's enjoyable, but you know, as I said, it has its ups and downs, and it's obviously more enjoyable when you're winning. And, and, is, and it, is it still the same buzz when you get on a, when you get on? Or when you win, yeah. When you're in the middle of the race, yeah. I, 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 it's, it's all about winning, you know. You know, much and all, as I said, I, 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 I love to do it. I, it, it, I'm not sure I would enjoy it quite as much as if I wasn't winning because it's all about winning, you know. It's that's what gives you the buzz. It's, um, and it's the same buzz that it always was, yeah, or has it, has it got? I, it, 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 you know, probably as I've got older, I've, I've learned to enjoy it a lot more. Um, you know, when I was younger, I thought it was my divine right to win more than everyone else. And I thought that, you know, that was just the way life was, that I was just going to get to ride the best horses and, and ride more winners than anyone else. And it doesn't work like that. You know, you have to you have to work at it. You know, you have to, you know, I've, 
you know, I'm watching all this, I'm pretty confident when I'm on a horse and I'm, I'm probably happiest when I'm on a horse. When I go home at night after a bad day and I haven't had any winners, then it, you know, I have the fear of failure that I'm sure lots of people have, you know, that I'm, you know, I can't wait the next day so I can have another go. You know, I need the next day to come again because I need to get out there again. I need to prove to myself that I'm as good as I was the day before yesterday when I had some winners, you know, so. But you, you still beat yourself up then? Yeah, I'd love to be able to say that I'm much more mellow and I've got used to it and I can cope with it better, but it 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 does it does get to you, you know. Um, you know, it do, you know that's that's the the side of the sport that I should think, or the side of any sport that I should think is um, is uncurable, if you like. You know, you, if it's an addiction. It it is an addiction, you know. And 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 as I said, I, I when when those days are not so good, I I look forward to the next day. You know, I can't wait. You know, I can't wait till that night is gone and I wake up the next morning. It's a new day, and in my head it is a new day. What happened yesterday is gone. It's no one cares. I don't care. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to win today, and yesterday's history. You know, so and and that's the same whether you win three races yesterday, you go racing the next day is a new day. You know, I mean, no one. Mm. Everyone wants to know what's going to win today. I mean, you may not know the answer to this question, or you might you might have it, and you you, you might have a moment where you think you know that, that that's it, I've I've done it. But after four thousand, how much longer? Uh, I I don't ever think I've done it because I think in any walk of life, no matter how successful you are, how much you win, someone's always going to win more. You know, so there's always there, are, you know, there is always someone that's more successful. So, but but there's no one even knocking on on your door. You're so far ahead. Yeah, but there will be, you know, there will be. Um, I just hope I'm not alive whenever it does happen. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I don't know, you know, obviously my, my, in, my, in my life I've always set myself goals and targets because it, it, you know, it gives me something to keep me focused and, you know, I think you need to be, you know, I think you need to be chasing things, you know what I mean? You need to, otherwise you go into the comfort zone and you float through life and you're not challenging challenging yourself as much as you should. So mm. um, I, I, I set myself goals, obviously, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Um, my goal for the last number of years has been to ride 4,000 winners. And what's the next goal then? Uh, you know, I, I want to be champion jockey at the end of the season and if I'm lucky enough to be champion jockey, then that will be my 19th year. And Whether I want to try and win 20 in a row is, is another thing, but you, I, I need to... You, you, have, you, haven't, you haven't got there in your own mind yet. I, 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 need to, I need to be happy that um, I'm still um, able to compete at a high level and I'm still as good as I was, you know what I mean? But th that's always been the case in, in my, my mind. I said, I, I've, I've always feel like I've got to prove to myself that I'm, 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 I'm still as good as I was, you know? So and, yeah, and that's, yeah. th I've, I, that's, I've been like that for the last 18 years. So. I mean, clearly this is your life, horses. You spoke so eloquently of your, your happiness of being on a horse. Do, do you see a path where you'd do the kind of thing that John Joe does and train? Um, because you, you know, you've got that affinity. Training is quite a tough, quite a tough, quite a tough business. You know, it's 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 twenty four hours of your life. Racing uh, as a as a jockey is is pretty much similar. But I I, I do feel that as as a trainer, you've got to be on call twenty four hours. You got to speak to the owners. You got to be you know. There's no relaxing time. At least if as a jockey, if I've got a few days off, I can go and play golf. Um, I can do the other other things in life. And I I kind of feel that if I wanted to be a trainer and I wanted to be a successful trainer. I'd have to be even more obsessed with being a trainer as I as I was with being a jockey, and I don't know. I've already lived twenty odd years of my life being like that as a jockey, and whether I'd like to do that again, I'm mm. not so sure. Mm. Um, in, in other words, you only want to do it if you can win. Yeah, you know, you you know, you want to be able to to be the you know, you want to try and be able to compete with the best and and be the best really. So yeah. um, I'm not sure if I. I, I'm not sure if I've got the credentials to be that successful as a trainer, you know. Or, or, the, or the patience. Or, or the patience, you know, and, and you need to have lots of support and you need to have good owners, you know, and, and you need to be producing the results for them, you know, so. Um, and you need to be in, in your, your yard 24 hours a day, you know. The, if I was to become a trainer, there wouldn't be any golf, there wouldn't be any going to watch Arsenal, there wouldn't be so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the the the, the, the social, social side of things are, are definitely... Um, you're a little bit more restricted, that's for sure. Yeah, sure. You, you kind of uh, 
um, uh, spoke about the, the, the safety aspect of, of the sport. You're, you're, you're a father now, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a father likewise. Your kids, when they get older, they say, Dad, I want to be a jump jockey. What do you say? Um, you know what? Why don't you go and do something sensible like an accountant? Yeah, de definitely not Eve, my daughter. I, I think it's very tough for, for girls to compete as a jump jockey. You know, as a flat jockey, it's been proven that they've been successful. And there has been, there, ha there have been girls that have been successful as jump jockeys. I'm not saying that it's not, but it's a tough physical sport. Um, and whether I'd want my daughter to do it, I, I, I wouldn't. You know, I, I can cope with... I can cope with me being in hospital and me being in the ambulance and, um, you know, me, me, me having lots of, of uh, being in pain a lot of the time, but I, I don't think I could cope very well with my daughter being in pain. My son, um, he's only two months old. If he wants to be a jump jockey and he goes down that route, well then so be it. You know, it's, you know, I, I should hope he's physically and mentally tough enough to cope with it. And, Hopefully he's a little bit brighter than me, so um, he might play golf or football instead. So, um, but it's 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 tough. It's tough for a, for a, for a girl, that's for sure. Sure, sure. And and I mean the the the, the wider challenges facing the sport, it, not so much something that seems to have affected uh, the jumping side of things, but you know these kind of weekly we hear about another you know kind of vial of something is found and doping and the rest of it. How, how worried are you? about the credibility of the sport going forward? Uh, the credibility credibility of the sport, uh, I, I would never worry about because um, whatever about the good and bad things in the sport, um, the regulatory body is, is pretty good at policing things and keeping things right in every walk of life, whether there's betting or whether there's money involved, there's always going to be someone to try, trying yeah. to get... Because betting, betting is the other thing that people always thing, you worry know, about. You know, you've only got to look at you know other other sports football snooker whatever it may be there will always be someone who who wants to get the easy buck you know what i mean and that, that's just the way of life you know so it's about how the sport polices it and how the sports um you, you know keep keep an eye on on, on things like that but I, I think racing is in in good hands from that point of view um mm -hmm. as i said whatever when there's betting involved or when there's large sums of money involved there will always be someone who wants to um get the easy get the easy pound rather than working hard for it, you know, so mm. um, I think and it's in good hands. And I mean, and you're, I mean, obviously at the moment, well, now for, the, well, for 18 years, you've been at the pinnacle and I, and, and I guess that kind of success brings with it some protection. You're surrounded by good people that have their best interests at heart. When you were younger, were you ever pressured to, you know, not ride as hard as you should have or anything like that? No, I, I've been, I've been very lucky that I've always, you know, um, worked with and for good people. Um, and you know, so I, I've always found it very easy, and I always, uh, my dream in life was to be champion jockey. You know, so, um, you know, that's whatever anyone else gets up to, whatever they do is their business. It's not mine. So, um, as long as I can, as I said, can achieve my goals in life, then I don't really care about anyone else. To be honest, I'm quite selfish like that. And and, and that dream, twenty years ago, what advice would you give the young AP? What mistakes did you make there? Uh, I, I made I made lots of mistakes. You know, I would I love to start again. Yeah, I would. I, I'd love to start again. You know? You'd do the whole thing again. I'd love to do the whole thing again. Yeah. All uh, the breaks, all the bruises, yeah, all the bumps. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd love to have another go. Um, you know, I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes along the way. So I, I think if I had another go, I could definitely improve. And so what? On what I've done the last give give me one Big, biggest mistake that that you'd uh, uh, not do. I can't I can't think of one off hard. But if you're starting out in, you know, you need to you need to work hard, and you need, you know, that the, the greatest, you know, gift of all I think is 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 to work hard. You know, no matter how much talent you have, you can you can be successful on one day, and you can be better than everyone else. But to be continually successful you have to be you know you have to work hard um, no matter how much talent you get it won't keep you there forever you know mm. um, and and as I said keep yourself pretty pretty level you know you, as I said because no matter how good you are one day it doesn't give you the, you, you know you're not you're not always going to be lucky enough to be successful so um, so the, the, the advice to anyone you know, I said, is 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 for me, and it is to 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 work hard. You know, and and you've got to prove it to yourself every day. You know, that's you know, I think every day when I get up, I've got to prove it to myself that I can be successful today. Because 
as I said, no one really cared about yesterday. When you when four thousand when four thousand comes along, is it going to be a case of okay, done, move on? Are you what's going? How are you going to feel? Uh, I, you know, there are you know for for there's no doubt for that day and hopefully for that day and a day or two after I'll be I'll be you know I I'll be proud of uh, you know I'm proud of my achievements um, and I will enjoy it, but will I dwell on it and think that I've made it or anything like that? Definitely not, you know, um, because someone else is going to want to win the next day and I want you know so it's up to me and me to prove it that I still want to win more than everyone else so. Um, you know, as I said, I will enjoy it. I will feel a great fulfilment, um, and I'll be proud of of, and I'm, I am proud of what I've achieved. But um, as I said, I I still go out the next day feeling that I've got to prove it all again. You know, because mm. um, that's just the way life is. And of all the achievements, wh which is which is the most cherished one? National, synchronized, N Gold Cup? No, no. My greatest achievement w was beating Sir Gordon Richards all time. Um, record for numbers of winners in a season. Um, so Gordon Richard was 26 times champion flat jockey. He's the most successful um, jockey that there's ever been. Um, his record was there for 55 years. He had 2269 winners in a season. And in 2002, I, I, I beat that with having 289 winners. So that's my greatest achievement. And, and that will always be my greatest achievement because for a record to, to stand for that long and, and to be someone that was that, that successful to beat his record is because you need a lot of luck in one season. You need to, you know, you need to stay injury free, not have many suspensions. You need a lot going for you, you know. So, you know, four thousand winners is one of those things. If I'm lucky enough to stay in one piece and and, and don't get injured, it's going to come along at some point. But when you're under pressure to do it within a season, um, you know that that will always be my greatest achievement. And outside, outside racing. Who are your sporting business political icons? Who who do you look to and think you know what that is an individual, a man, woman, whoever that I really respect? Oh, my my boss J P McManus is right up there as a person. Just you can learn so much from spending time with him. So, um, but I, I respect lots of people. I, I anyone that's successful, that you know anyone that's been there. The, the longevity of something is something that I really respect, and, and there's been numerous people in, in, in sport or other areas that, that I've respected you know you know you've got to look at someone like Sir Alex Ferguson that's you know that was so successful at Manchester United for such a long time and but you're an Arsenal fan this is sacrilege yeah you know I, 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 I agree um, um, I respect the Arsenal team that went 2004 on five season unbeaten I don't I'm not sure that'll ever be done again um, you know that is a, a, an amazing achievement so um, but uh, yeah, I respect lots of people. And, and uh, the, the, you uh, spoke very warmly, fondly, sensitively about the impact that injuries to other jockeys have on you. But what about the bond that you develop or, or don't develop even with a horse? I mean, obviously, the, the synchronized story is one that people know about. Yeah, like like our horses are like people, you know. I I tend to. That's how I look at horses, you know. Some of them are, some of them have nice, and some of them are not so nice, and some of them have great character, and some of them don't, you know. Um, you know, a horse like synchronized. Uh, his mother was, was the first ever winner I rode for JP McManus. Um, JP's wife Noreen bred him. Um, he he, you know, he won the Cheltenham Gold Cup, and obviously what happened to him in the national was, was was um, was very sad and very hard to take. Um, but you you know you look at the positive things in life. He he achieved more one day in Cheltenham than a lot of horses would ever get to achieve. You know, so um, I I I'd rather think of the the good days. You know, and 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 I said like it, it's it's just the way life is. You know, there there will always be ups and downs. You know, um, you know some the, our sport is obviously a bit more dangerous than others. But you know you look at football. Someone like Fabrice Moamba nearly died on a football pitch. You know, so. Mm. Um, so it, it can happen, sadly. Mm -hmm. Yeah.